a couple previous videos looking at my Apple II Plus, uh, I, I pointed out that I have an issue with inverse video on the screen where when there's inverse video characters, the top three or four scan lines of each character, the pixels kind of blink on and off. Uh, the characters just aren't nice and solid in the display. And I decided it was time to tackle that and try to figure out what was going on. Uh, when I first came into this, I didn't realize that from the Rev7 forward, Apple had changed the part number they used for the character generator. So I came into this assuming that all Apple... Uh, two motherboards, uh, and, you know, the two and the two plus used a twenty five thirteen character generator ROM, uh, and as it just said, as it turns out, at Rev Seven Forward they changed the ROM type. There's some definite differences between the two ROMs. The earlier motherboards used the twenty five thirteen. It's got split power supplies: plus five, minus twelve, and minus five. It's got VSS on an odd pin, and its pinout is just kind of an odd layout. Starting at Rev7, they moved to the 2316B ROM, which is a much more standard pinout, as you see in uh, uh, you know, memory devices going forward from that time. So, of course, like I said, when I first came into this, I assumed this was the ROM I needed to replace. I went ahead and ordered a replacement ROM from Reactive Micro, received it, then before I plugged in, I just started to dig a little bit deeper. And as it turns out, I can't use the ROM I ordered on my uh, 2 Plus motherboard. Now, I am building, at some point, a Rev Zero machine. I have reproduction blank Rev Zero uh, motherboard that I'll be building. And this part will get used on it. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyhow, as I dug deeper into this, I started to wonder about like the timing. How, you know, how fast does the video uh, RAM have to be, or the vid character generator ROM have to be? And started looking for data sheets. And for the 2513 that's used on the pre-Rev7 uh, ROMs, or pre-Rev7 uh, motherboards, I found this data sheet that, that called out the parts 450 nanosecond typical access time. So that was a good hint. I uh, also uncovered another data sheet that confirmed some of the, the, the same kind of findings for that 2513 part again. And I found this data sheet really interesting because it actually tells how to use punch cards to send your own custom patterns for the character generator ROM to the factory. Uh, so you'd go ahead and, and come up with your pattern layout based on the information they give you here. Punch that to punch cards and then ship the deck off to the factory and they would actually produce custom uh, character generator ROMs for you. So I just kind of thought that was interesting. Uh, realizing the part in my machine is a 9316B, I finally found a data sheet for it which we have here, and it's, again, uh, 450 nanosecond parts typical. So that told me, again, a 450 nanosecond EEPROM should be fine uh, to use in there. They claim it is pin compatible with the 2716, uh, which is pretty accurate. And it's just a typical data sheet at this point. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in, and I, I've kind of prepared some notes here to talk this through. Uh, so anyhow, as we, we just got through talking about the 2513 with the odd power supply requirements is in the older Rev boards. My board, which is the Dash D, I believe, uses a 2316. I suspected the 2316B on the motherboard was failing. So I decided to go ahead and program up 2716. There's really three concerns here, and these are the pins that are called out in blue. Uh, for the 2316B, there's two active low chip selects, chip select 1 and 2. Those pins have to be taken to a logic 0, along with chip select 3 taken to a logic 1 to enable the part. If we scroll down here a bit, let me get everything kind of in frame here, and actually look at the schematic for the uh, Rev7 and RFI uh, motherboards, we can see that chip select 1 and chip select 2 these two guys here are grounded, so they're both low, so the part would be active. And chip select 3 here is at plus 5. So the part is always enabled uh, in this configuration. It's just plugged in. The part is always active. If we take the equivalent pins on the 2716, we'll see that pin 21, chip select 3, becomes VPP. On an EEPROM, the high voltage for programming is applied on this pin. 12 volts to 25 volts is a typical range. For normal read operation, you put it at 5 volts, and that's what they've done here. They've taken pin 21 and scrapped it to plus 5, which is perfect. Uh, and then pin 20 and pin 18 are two active low chip selects for the 2513, and there are also active low chip selects on the 2716. So in this application, this really is just a drop-in replacement. 
uh, for the character generator ROM. Uh, in a previous video, I went ahead and programmed up that uh, 2716. Uh, we'll jump in now and take a look at the machine and whether replacing this ROM actually fixes the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the video issue that's been mentioned uh, many times uh, throughout shooting video. Get the door closed on the Apple II, get it booted here. There's a couple of things to talk about here. The first thing, and I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, is in the cursor there's a little pixel that's stuck on up towards the top. Oh, screwdriver's magnetic and affected the screen there. That's not a good thing. So uh, that little pixel is incorrect. I have the original uh, character generator ROM in the system. I've written a little simple basic program just to uh, poke into memory all the possible characters. So uh, we're just going to take character in variable x from 0 to 255. We're going to poke it into video memory uh, starting on the second line of the video and, it, and because of the way the video works I, it'll write across multiple lines but that's fine. Let's go ahead and run this. And what you should be seeing on the screen here, and I can certainly see it, get something to kind of point with here, is in these top few scan rows in the inverse video, you can see the video is, is flickering. You can see it up here on the one and the two. There's pixels uh, turning on and off in the inverse video. Uh, it's really most evident here where there's non-flashing of video. And, you know, it looks to me like about the first three or maybe four rows are uh, or just an issue with them, they do that weird flicker. I've looked at things like power supply noise, that's not it. Uh, I originally had 300 nanosecond DRAMs in Bank Zero where the video memory lives, and I thought maybe uh, because of the way video works on the system, those RAMs were a little bit slow. Uh, replace those with 200s, that didn't fix it. Uh, so I ended up down at this point where just, you, you know, it kind of came down to all I could think of was it's the character generator ROM causing this. In a previous video, we programmed up a 2716, and I'm sure this isn't showing up very well here on camera. Let me add some light. I'll take a quick look at the EEPROM. So there's the character generator. I'm holding it upside down. The EEPROM I pro programmed up, it's a MOSTEC MK2716. It'll come into focus there. Uh, you know, pretty standard old school part. I believe it's a 450 nanosecond part uh, based on finding the data sheet for the uh, character generator ROM that's in here. It's a 450 nanosecond part. I think I'm going to have either shown that or we'll show that here uh, in the video. Anyhow, let's turn the system off. Let me pop that character generator ROM out of there. Oh, apologies for Rosie in the background there. Can't find my chip puller all of a sudden, so I'm using a small screwdriver. Got the 2716. I have not tried this 2716 in the socket here before. It's in, it's in the proper orientation. Let's just see what we get. So that looks perfectly normal. Oh, got to close the floppy disk door. Obviously, the system won't boot. Come on, little machine. And I don't know if you can see it now or not, but in the cursor, I no longer have that extra pixel up at the top that was just always on. So that's a good sign. I, um, the second little program I wrote, it's the same as the first program. All it does is display, uh, you know, line 10 is different just to tell us we're on the MK2716 EEPROM. Besides that, it's identical. Let's go ahead and run that. 
and we can see now that this actually fixes the issue so the inverse video uh, actually looks correct I don't have the dancing pixels so so that's a good thing uh, anyhow uh, that's progress very happy with that so with it appearing that my 2716 replacement for the character generator ROM is actually working I think it's time to wrap this video up I wanted to give a quick uh, shout out to W. Gaylor, I believe it is, whoever wrote this Apple II Circuit Description book. It's a really well-written book, really detailed, and it's been invaluable as I've explored the Apple II. I wanted to comment that there's a couple different versions of the PDF out there on the web. The PDF name W. Gallagher, or Gaylor, Apple II Description, the way I have it here, that version actually has later documentation in it, so it picks up the later RFI boards. So there's a few places in the schematic where there were some changes in these later boards, and that's called out there, uh, which has been really useful. So if you're going to go look for this document, look for the one with the full name, uh, as I found it the most useful. So anyhow, I think I'll go ahead and wrap this up here, and we'll talk soon.